I'm getting you doing this now. So this one's mine? But this one's mine. Oh, okay. Are you helping me? Okay. Beatrice, can you quiet down for a moment? Yeah, we need for you to be quiet. Can you just be quiet for a moment? Okay. Okay. Is it still going? So I can just go? Go. In this lecture, I use images from medieval manuscripts to introduce the society of the Middle Ages. I'm going to try to talk about medieval society and sort of explain how it works um, using these images. When we use images, we can learn a lot about a society. Like, we, we learn about the people who looked at them, um, why they chose to represent things a certain way. The images that I use as my as my visual schema as showing me sort of the the cosmos in miniature they come from a book of hours called this it's a famous book of hours and it's called the trilish which is like the um the very beautiful hours what is a book of hours a book of hours is a book that um tells people different prayers to say at the different hours of the day it's made for lay people who who want to act like monks and they want to pray at certain times of the day which is what monks do monks pray um, seven times a day so a lay person uh, would, would want to imitate this and they would they would have to be wealthy to own one of these it's a luxury item so they would they would get this book and it would tell them um, when you wake up in the morning you say this prayer uh, before lunch you say this prayer uh, then you know before before dinner sunset. If you're really pious, you actually wake up at three in the morning and say another prayer. Imagine how many monks stayed in bed for that one. Uh, but so you, you, you have this kind of register of, of how your day is supposed to go. And, uh, and, and this is laid out in something like this little book of hours. Um, it also has a calendar. So it divides time in terms of, of Christian prayer, in terms of Christian hours. But then it also divides time according to the months of the year. So, so it's the hours of the day and the months. And for each month, there's this little painting that depicts like what's happening. So this is, this is February. So in February, everyone's in their house. It's cold and, and you're not doing much. The, the birds are trying to pick the seeds off the ground and the, <coughs> the lambs are all snuggled in their little hut. People are chopping wood. And then here, um, there's, there's agriculture, right? You're starting to, to till the soil and um, to get ready for the new crop. And the sheep, you can see the sheep maybe in the background. The sheep, they're out now. So anyway, we, it goes through and, and for every month, it kind of shows what's happening architecturally. It's, it's painted by um, famous painters in the 15th century. They're, they're called the Limburg brothers. It's called a miniature because it's actually, uh, it would be about seven by five, something like this. Like, so it's pretty small. So I mean, if you look at this, like look at the detail in that maybe, and then picture that it's only this big. Um, so it's painted sometimes with like literally one hair on a brush. Uh, but they're made for, this, this particular book is made for the Duc de Berry, the, the Duke of Berry. Um, Excuse me. He is the Duke of Berry. Is the um, he's the brother of the King of France. So um, he's he's an incredibly well-off patron. Um, we're talking about a luxury item at the highest level, and we're talking about um, nobility at the highest level. So literally, you, you can't really get more noble than being the King of France's brother. I think that these are a good thing to use to try to explain medieval society, and I want to emphasize that. What it does is, is, it does explain something about how medieval society worked, but it also explains how medieval society was intended to work. So um, it's, these are, they're idealized images, they're, they're making something that looks very beautiful, and it's an idea about what medieval society should be that 
isn't necessarily reflected in reality. So we're dividing time up according to um, prayer, according to Christianity. But then, can you see what these are? Can you tell? Yeah, exactly. They're constellations, but then they're also like, what are these figures? Horoscopes. Yeah. yeah. Which is totally pagan, right? Um, you're not supposed to do that. And can anybody see like what? Can you see what he? Yeah, it's a carrot. Exactly. It's a chariot. So this is this is supposed to represent Apollo. Apollo riding across the, the heavens with the sun. So there's the stars. God has created this, this layer that is the stars. And they're moving in a, a fixed pattern across the sky through the day. So you have a sense of the, the cycle of time that, that you go through throughout the year and it's expressed in these different ways. And then at the same time you have these, these cycle of prayers that you go through throughout the day. It's expressing like this view of the universe where everything is, uh, of course, everything is created by God. Right? And, um, and everything is fixed in its place. And there's an idea that, that each sort of layer has its place in the world and that they all kind of move together in harmony. So it's, it's, it's an ideal. It's like the ideal of society. This is how it's supposed to work. This is what it's supposed to look like. And then underneath, we get this image of what, what the world, like the, what the human world is supposed to be like and how it's supposed to be fixed. So there's a hierarchy of people. The people are divided up too. And um, according to medieval notions, society is divided into three groups. Those who work, those who pray, and those who fight. And so I'm gonna talk, in this first lecture, I'm going to talk about kind of the, the overall structure of medieval society, and then I plan on having short segments where I talk about each of those in detail. So there'll be a segment on those who work, that's peasants, and then there'll be one on those who fight, that's the nobility, and one on those who pray, and that's the clerics. Just visually look at this, like between the stars and the sun, there's like a barrier, right? And then there's this kind of line, um, and then we have the earthly world. So we have a castle, and then around it we have a wall. To me, the wall is, is really important. It's important, um, I mean, it, it would have existed in reality, but it's also an important visual element because it's separating. It's like a division, this, this godly ordained division of the classes. So we have this wall, and then we have the fields and the peasants working in the fields. And when we look at the peasants, um, remember these are happy pictures, so you, can, you really can almost feel the sun. Uh, the, it's light colored, the, the, um, there's, they're loading a cart, they're loading their harvest onto the cart, and the cart is very full um, because this is a good year, it's a happy scene. And can you see what they're doing? I love this actually. This is what, water? Skinny dipping. It's warm and, um, and they are, uh, they're, naked, swimming in, in the river, and uh, I mean, they seem to be having like a grand old time. I know, I some heads like, what the what? The what? Of course, those who work, they're working, um, but they're also enjoying the elements. Um, their clothes are earth-toned, so they kind of blend into the landscape, they match the landscape. We see peasant skin, um, they're working with animals, so we see them like with their animals. And then you have the, the nobles. Uh, and how can we tell they're nobles? They're on horseback, first of all. And I think I said, remember, I think I said this before. Uh, if ever you see someone on horseback in history, you always know that they are um, from the elite because they're the only ones who can afford horses. So instead of walking or doing work, these nobles are enjoying the nice warm day. Fancy clothes, exactly. They are dressed in beautiful, bright colors. The one is wearing this, this bright blue um, that is about the most expensive color that you could have in the Middle Ages. Um, look, can you see the sleeves? That dog? Yes, that's a dog. That's a dog and that's a dog. Look at her sleeves. Can you see them? They're like, they start here and they go all the way down to the floor. They're in these long robes and they have these sleeves with these very, very long arms that hang all the way down to the ground. 
it's not only that you don't work, but you, you emphasize it by wearing clothes in which you couldn't possibly work. Um, so you're wearing things that would make it hard to move. They're wearing these long shoes. Like, the points go out to like <coughs> here. I kid you not. And can you do work in shoes like that? Obviously not. They're worse than high heels. They're in these clothes that kind of emphasize their, well, we could say their uselessness. Um, but they also emphasize their, their, like, their high status. And it's just, of course, the height of extravagance to have all of this extra beautiful material that's just hanging there on your arms, doing nothing, all this extra um, on your feet. And, you know, I mean, this is something that, that preachers, like, complain about. They, are, they, they see it as a sign of sinfulness. I and mean, we talk in our own culture about conspicuous consumption and um, having too much stuff for no reason. Well, in the Middle Ages, Preachers were complaining about these sinful people who were going around with these long shoes, that with these huge pointed toes, and um, and how this was like a sign of you know wastefulness and and of um, just showing your your conspicuous wealth and and not being like Christ, who of course did not wear fancy pointed shoes. But can you see what they're doing? Any guesses? Like up here, can you see what that is? Holding on his arm. Or maybe she's holding on her arm. A bird. Yeah. I guess the dogs are maybe like a fox hunt or something like that. Yeah, they're hunting, right? And this guy, so like this guy, um, I mean, and he's in the, he's allowed in like the the noble realm, but he's clearly a peasant, right? And we can tell if nothing else by his clothes, because he's got these these bare legs and kind of um, scruffy clothes. He's called a beater, which. It's not as exciting as it sounds, but he's got this long stick and he beats the bushes. So he's supposed to scare, I mean, this is like what the dogs do too. They're supposed to scare out the prey and then you've got your bird, you've got your hawk on your, your shoulder and you, you send it off and then it snatches the prey. Sorry? So did that actually work? It did actually work. Yes, but it took a lot of training to, to train these birds to, yeah. It did actually work and I mean, what fun. <laughs> this is this was like the the noble pastime du jour, um, so so it would be hawking or other kinds of hunting. Like this is what you did with your time. But the thing about this um, is that it's showing. It's like it's in a book of prayers. It's like God has ordained the hours of the day. He has ordained the seasons, but He's also ordained that the world should be like this. I mean, that's the message that we get. That it should be divided into these different groups and. Um, and there's no way of crossing this line. So the stars and the heavens and the angels, and then humans, and then beasts. And you could go through and say, like, well, um, bears, rabbits, lizards, I don't know. And a human is over a rabbit, and um, the seraphim, the angels are over a human, and like you could go through this. But then you could look at humans too, and you could say, well, um, a lord is over a peasant. Um, and a king is over a normal lord, and all of this could be broken up. Everything is supposed to have its order. A peasant could no more become a knight than like a lizard could become a bear. So it's a way of expressing the entire divine order, um, but in, in its most beautiful sense. Right? So, so um, it's all in perfect accord, and it's all in perfect harmony, and um, no one is miserable or unhappy in this, in this image of things. Ça commence avec toi. Why is the lecture on? My dear, you used it. On what? My dear, you used it.